I lost my place. There we are. Starting on the chapter 13, verse 24. Listen for the word of God. He put that before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in the field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these, seed, these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then what do you want us to do? Then do you want us to go and gather them? And he replied, No, for in the gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. And then jumping ahead to verse 36. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is, is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will be thrown into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, our ears are open to hear, to listen, to respond to your word. Amen. Do any of you know, have any of you heard about the weed known as kudzu? I think it's a comic in the Sunday paper, but I'm talking about the weed itself. From what I've read and understand, this kudzu is really one nasty weed. It is a type of vine that sort of crawls and clings and wraps around everything. Anything that gets in its way is going to be covered. It can grow about a about a foot and a half per day. If you're in an area where kudzu can grow, any abandoned car or house or barn is just going to be covered in kudzu in no time flat. It has been reported that it can, it can kill even a tall tree because it just wraps itself around it so much that it blocks the sun from getting to the tree and kills it. If you think about it, there are weeds everywhere. And what I want to do is take a moment and change our focus about weeds and, and kudzu and see if we can see some weeds in our lives. We have an immigration crisis going on in several states. It is estimated that 50,000 children will flee their homes from Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala because they will die if they stay there. They are risking their very lives to cross the border into the United States in the hope that there will be something better. And we are using our resources to find them, track them down, house them, feed them, ultimately process them, and then who knows what's going to happen. Many of them will be deported back home only to take the risk again to try to get into the United States. Now, I grant you that we have more resources available to us than just about any other 
country in the world, but still there are limits. And we have communities who are rightfully up in arms, not wanting these illegal immigrants in their backyard, and we have communities and churches rightfully opening their doors because these children are children of God and need help. Wheat? Weeds? Which one? A father is charged with intentionally killing his young son by leaving him in a sweltering car all day long. It is possible that he was having an affair. It is possible that he was sexting while his young son died. It is also possible that this is one huge, horrible mistake. From all reports, it seemed to be a very loving and wholesome family. How do you leave a child in a car? Wheat? Weeds? I don't know. There are reports about principals and teachers falsifying official reports to make them and their schools look better. And the reports about the VA hospitals across the country who have falsified their records to make them look better is absolutely appalling. There are reports that the Republicans are going to sue the president for, for misusing the executive privilege, executive order, which, as a, I'm not a politician by any stretch of the imagination, but the executive order is not even constitutional, but every president from the beginning of this great country has used it. Wheat <laughs> or weeds? I don't know. Our gardens are not pretty. Our gardens, however you want to define garden, is filled with weeds. This imagery of weeds began because Jesus' critics were concerned or angry or furious or, go ahead, pick your best word there, because Jesus was inviting people who had no understanding of what the laws were all about into the kingdom of God. Jesus was allowing slaves and women. He was allowing people with shady backgrounds, some with criminal pasts. He was allowing lepers. He was allowing Gentiles into the kingdom of God. Things had gotten so out of hand that, re that the religious leaders of the day were whispering to one another, we have really got to do something about this. And Jesus' response was to tell them a story about the kingdom of God. He was always telling stories about the kingdom of God. And in this parable, Jesus compared the kingdom to a farmer who sowed good seed in the field, and after a long, hard day of sowing good seed in the field, he went home, went to bed, fell asleep. And somewhere in the middle of the night, an enemy came and sowed weeds into the man's garden. It was impossible to tell the difference between the two when the wheat started to grow, the weeds grew along with it. And all of the field workers, in their desperation, ran to him and said, we need to pull the weeds out of the field. Just tell us to get started. And he went, no, 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 no. Nope, leave them. Leave it alone. At the harvest time, I'll take care of it. And the field workers just sort of walked away from him because he thought he, would, they were, he was nuts because no one leaves weeds in the field. You pull the weeds out, get rid of them, so that the wheat can grow properly. Several states worried about this growing problem of the illegal immigrants have passed laws to scare away all of the immigrants. One particular worker has picked onions in the state of Georgia for the past 16 years. He said he is moving to North Carolina because 
of Georgia's immigration laws. And even the farmers in Georgia are upset about the laws. Georgia's Fruit and Vegetable Growers Association reported that they do not have enough workers to harvest all of the vegetables in Georgia. Migrant workers are skipping Georgia and going on to other states. They estimate that, this, that the state's multi-million dollar fruit and vegetable industry is going to take a hit of $300 million because the immigrants are working someplace else and the U.S. citizens living in Georgia don't want to work in the fields. Just last week, there was a report about a young woman who has been working in the fields with her family for most of her life. And the family was doing all of this in order that she could go to school and the chance of having a better life. She is now enrolled in law school. There is no such thing as a perfect garden. We all have weeds in our lives. There are weeds everywhere. Each one of us is a mixture of good and evil, wheat and weeds. And you might think that if we recognize our own frailty, we might not be quite as pompous. We might not point fingers as quickly as we do. Jesus explained that we cannot pull up the weeds without destroying some of the wheat because you can't tell the difference between the two. And instead of risking even one stalk of wheat, God said, let it be. Don't worry about it. God will take care of the weeds at the appropriate time. I think part of the lesson that we need to learn here is patience. This is about God doing God's work in God's time, which is almost never when we want God to get around to doing the things we are imperfect people living in an imperfect world and, <clears throat> and decisions we make today may have consequences down the line that we haven't even been able to consider. We need to be patient with ourselves. We need to be patient with our brothers and sisters around the world. We need to be patient with God. Gardening is not an overnight business. It takes time. We need to remember the power of the seeds. Last week we talked about all of the seeds that were wasted in the sowing process, and still there was a great harvest. We are to spread the seeds that come from God. We are only the caretakers of the field. But all too often in desperation, to make sure that we produce a great harvest and to make sure that we look good in the eyes of God, we forget to let God do God's job. The harvest is not our responsibility. That's God's job. Our job is simply to plant the seeds. This is a parable of hope. There are a lot of different weeds out there and usually we can see every single one of them. But why we focus on the weeds, I haven't quite figured out yet. We must never forget that in the midst of all the weeds that we see, wheat is growing. We helped plant some of those seeds, and they are taking root in the most unlikely of places, and it will take time for them to grow but by the grace of God, grow they will. As I mentioned at the beginning of the sermon, there are people are spending a great deal of time, energy, and money trying to combat the destructive power of kudzu. Left alone, this plant will cover everything in its way in a very alarming rate. But this pesky plant, which is native to southern Japan and southeast China, 
It's also used to make lotions, jellies, compost. It is used for medicinal purposes. Kudzu is part of animal feed. It is also used for erosion control. It's amazing that something as destructive as kudzu can be used for something good. God can take the weeds in our own lives and make something meaningful out of them. Could it be that God is already taking these things that we look at as weeds and is bringing something redemptive out of them? I look back over my life and there's no question in my mind that there are times that I have shown up in the weed category. But give God time to do what God has the power and grace to do. Who knows what can be accomplished? Thanks be to God.